Well, good afternoon. I'm Bob Bockelman. It's the last Wednesday of the month of July 2009. And as you saw from our opening, Restaurant Review morphs into Artist Review. Uh, become very popular with regard to doing it on the last Wednesday of the month. We started it this year, and everyone seems to look forward to it. So we're pleased today to have another a young gentleman painter in to um, show his works. And as you know, for those who have not seen it before... We bring different artists on and at once a month, and he or she brings in approximately 14 pieces of their work, and we actually go over, let you get to know a little bit about them, and then individually go over each piece. So it's really like a living gallery, or a vir not a virtual gallery, but a TV gallery. So you can see a little bit more in depth than the one or two pieces you might see on a on another show, or if it's a fundraiser, etc. So you, you get to know a little bit more about the artist, and you also uh, can find out more information. But without further ado, let's go ahead and meet today's guest, and his name is Mike Kilgore. Welcome to the show, Mike. How you doing, Bob? Good, good. Appreciate you coming in. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, uh, we always like to know if you're a native or not. Well, Bob, I've, um, I'm a native of New Orleans. Grew up, uh, lived most of my life in Metairie. All right. That's um, good. I've been, you know, I've been painting and drawing and engaging in other creative activities uh -oh. pretty much all my life. Um, How did you get interested in, in, in painting or any of the arts? Well, it's it's something that I've I've done as long as as long as I can remember. I mean, I can't remember a time in my life when I wasn't either paint, painting or. So you were a two-year-old or... painter. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow, wow, that's great. That's mm -hmm. great. That's great. Well, uh, well, we're glad to hear that. We're glad you're here. Now, let's talk about a little bit about uh, where people can see your work. First of all, uh, I know you have uh, some things on exhibition right now, so let's yes. talk about those places. So if anyone wants to see additional stuff. Uh, tell us the uh, galleries or uh, locations of the uh, present uh, pieces. Well, right now I'm showing at, I have some pieces up at Ariadante Gallery on uh, on Julia Street. Okay. It's uh, 535 Julia Street, part of the um, New Orleans Arts District. Uh, yeah. will be open for uh, White Linen Night. That's what I'm going to say. Right now it's very coincidental for those who follow. I, I forgot what year this is, but I know it's White Linen Night coming mm -hmm. up the first week in August, right? That's right, this Saturday. This this Saturday, I'll be out of town, so I'm missing, unfortunately, but but your gallery will be open, just like all the others, especially that's almost in the heart of the uh, of the activities. Yeah, that's right, we'll, we'll be open, and um, and you're going to be there personally, I would imagine? I'll, I'll be there, I'll be there personally, I'm not the featured artist uh, okay. this month, but I will have my, I will have several pieces up in the gallery, Okay. and um, I also show at the Funky Palette in Baton Rouge, in the Circa 1857 Arts Complex. Okay. Wow, that's nice. And you have several pieces up there now as well? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Now, what about a website? I know you said you didn't, uh, speaking before, and you don't really have a, a website other than Facebook. And uh, today that's become a, a website for everyone and for all kinds of purposes. And the most important thing is you do have pieces of your art up there. So for those who don't see the show or outside the area, they can go in. Let's tell them how, how would they reach you through Facebook? Well, if you're on Facebook, you just have to uh, you just have to search for my name, Mike Kilgore, K-I-L-G-O-R-E, okay. and you'll It'll come up my page with uh, with my picture, and I have uh, I have several photo albums with with my work sorted by uh, sorted by series. But you can see most of my pieces up on my Facebook on my Facebook page. So you and, do have an extensive amount of your work up there. Yeah, and then I also have a little page on the Ariadante on Ariadante Gallery's website. Ah, okay. And as is probably Ariadante.com. Is it Ari, Ariadante Gallery dot com slash Mike underscore Kilgore. Oh, that gets rough for most people. But anyway, I think if you go to Aridante.com, they probably will have a link mm -hmm. to it, yes. right? So that's the key. A and I believe that's A-R-I-O-D-A-N-T-E gallery.com. That's correct. Well, great. So those two will be on. Well, obviously, uh, the Aridante will be on for a while. The one in Baton Rouge will be on for a little longer, too, for in case uh, someone travels into Baton yeah, Rouge. Yeah, I'll be... I'm um, I'm one of their regular artists that they, that they show. Okay. So I'll be... Uh, my work will be up there, be featured... 
um, for for a while now. Okay. Now let's talk about because uh, you know we're we're classifying you as a painter, which you are, but uh, uh, you're one of a significant number of artists uh, that post Katrina, mm-hmm. a couple of them that we've actually had on the show, sculptors and artists that uh, have uh, found art in salvaged or recycled materials uh, that are Came up, came to us, uh, came to their view since Katrina, and I think that's uh, the mainstay of what we're going to show today. I don't know if that's your whole program, but tell us a little bit about that. How, how you got into that? And what exactly we're doing before we actually start taking a look at at some of the pieces? Okay, well, as you said, you know that's not my whole you know mainstay as an artist. I've since then I've moved on and uh, and done other things, sort of that have that have evolved that have evolved out of that direction. So this was really just early post Katrina. Yeah, I had um, I had been doing some uh, some renovation work in my house, and I was real I was I was inspired by a lot of the um, just the different materials and the textures that I would encounter in all of my uh, in all of my building projects. Um, so the old adage, "Someone's treasure trash is another person's treasure." You could see the treasure out of the perhaps trash that was uh, exactly. being discarded or mm-hmm. wasted by Katrina. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but but you say you've moved on. So for those who, before we get in this, so what what type of area are you still going using the same type of a media? Or are you going totally different for some of your newer pieces that we're not going to see today? What else do you? Well, where are you going in that new direction? It's the well, it's not necessarily a new direction. It's just an evolution of the uh, of the path that I'm that I'm going that I'm going on as an artist. Uh, for example. I, I did a whole series of uh, of paintings that were mostly about uh, renovating my house and doing all of that after Katrina. And I would use materials that I would find on the street and just leftover scraps and paint and texture and varnish. What you know, whatever I had, whatever I had laying around, I would make a composition with. Okay. And you know, that's that's pretty much what I'm what I'm still doing now. It's all about it. okay. except you know, it's it's evolved and. You know, I've, of course, I've developed new techniques and new processes that I've integrated, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a different direction. Okay, well, it's that's the same. Fine. That's just my mm-hmm. my way to explain that we're talking about different stuff than what we're looking at here. But that's fine. Evolution to me is is, is a difference from what you did before. Uh, and and uh, important thing here is what we really need to explain to people is because for the most part we've had traditionalist paintings with either just oil or acrylics on canvas, um, but here we. We have what we call mixed media, and that means we are mixing different pieces of materials together. Uh, some people call that 3D art, you know, and uh, that that's just another name for it. Mm-hmm. But um, for the most part, let's. Well, I think perhaps maybe the best thing. Let's go ahead and see if we can take it. We've got to bring up a small one right here for you folks. Uh, tell and I know he's titled each of his works, which is really great because I think it adds a lot of a lot of importance to each piece. Uh, what do we call this? And let's describe this one. This one is brick number three. Okay. It's the third in a series of very small paintings of that size or smaller. So what size is this for the folks uh, who out there can't tell? That's about five by ten. Five by ten. So about mm-hmm. five inches by ten inches long. Uh-huh. Now it's not really a brick, is it? No, it's just that's just the that's just the title of it. It's shape of a brick. It's mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, it looks like wood to me. Is that right? Yeah. It's a it's a wood frame, uh, sort of a wood stretcher, with uh, uh, some tile with some tile and some expanding insulation foam and some faux finish stone and some paint and and silicone and wood glue. So where would the tile be? Would that be somewhere along here, this right in this area? Yeah, here? that it's that would be on your right side, which right you, where you're, huh? you're pointing. Yeah, I can see. Mm-hmm. And of course, obviously, the foam is so standout. So this is insulation foam that you've crafted to attach to the piece of wood, and then applied your different coloration schemes. Yeah, and what's interesting about uh, this is part of a new series that I've uh, that I've called um, Sun Ripened Paintings. Okay. Because let's explain that then. Because the uh, this insulation foam, you'll see it in different colors on the uh, on different on some of my different pieces. It comes out of the it comes out of the can almost uh, white, like the color of uh, like the color of uncooked dough. 
Okay. Um, and then over time, it turns yellow and then orange. And so I consider, and that, that takes that takes a long time. So we'll say, for example, this this painting is complete the way it is from a compositional standpoint. I'm not going to do anything else to it, and I feel I feel comfortable and I feel ready showing that showing that piece in a gallery or in another public venue. So but, I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. But it will um, over time. It will that uh, that yellow that bright yellow um, foam will turn a nice orange color. So this is really, you are not really having a hand in the coloration process of the foam. Obviously, a lot of us who uh, put foam installation in our homes know it comes out in that white look, but obviously the solar exposure will, mm -hmm. over time turns it to this yellow, and then you say almost to an orange? Is that yeah, right? it turns. It but turns so again, this is a natural process. You're not actually painting colors on there. Is that right? Right. Okay. Right, right. And so I would say a mature a mature painting that I would I just for lack of a better word I say is fully ripe is um, would be when this uh, when the foam turns that orange color which and it just takes time depending on even how much light in, it's like in. I say if someone brought this in and hang it on their wall and might not get any exposure to sunlight anymore so just the natural light of the house would in other words, it'll keep turning on its own it doesn't yeah. have to be exposed to sunlight the entire time right it'll keep turning on its own and then until a point where I would would, we, you would just say that it's uh, it's completely ripe is okay. the word I like to use. Mm -hmm. So I've created a whole series of these using the foam, and I call them sun ripened paintings, just because of that. Uh, you know, once it once it it reaches that dark color, mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like the painting is has matured. Okay. You know, like like a um, like a piece sure. of fruit or a, uh, right. or a good wine. Sure. Well, that's great. So he, here we see another use for solar energy if you want to call but in art and no functionality except from the art situation but uh, really really great okay let's take a look at another piece why don't you uh, pick up that second one okay and then we'll go from there let's talk about that please this piece this is part of a series of um, of paintings that were um, this this series is this is from the series Mestrando Cocada's Academy. Um, no, you got to slow down with that. Well, I want to repeat that again slower. Mestrando Cocada's Academy. Uh, is that a person? Or? Yeah, that's a that's a person. Um, is that local? Yeah, Mestrando Cocada is uh, an he artist? is a no he is an he teches capoeira a, a uh, Afro Brazilian okay. martial art. Oh right right. Okay. And this is. Um, I'm one of his students, and this painting is taken. We did a, uh, we had a project where we took an old, we 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 built our academy from an old laundromat uh, uptown. We gutted, we had to gut the whole building and pull out all the washers and the dryers and you know gut the whole place pretty much, and just re you know start from scratch and renovate the building, and that inspired that inspired a whole series of paintings, and this is this. This is the first one. Of, this is the first one of them. This one's titled "After Marcel Duchamp." It's actually upside down. I think it goes like that. Um, but you could you really could show it either way. But this is um, this is actually this was a piece of sheetrock and a big glob of sheetrock mud that someone spilled in the uh, process of um, of renovating of renovating the building, mm -hmm. and it just dried like that. And I found that you know this was it was all just. Uh, gray, because that's just the color of the unfinished sheetrock and the sheetrock mud, and you can see it's got a footprint in it, and I just found it like that, and I painted it, and I added all the color and the texture, and I put it on the stretcher so it would be able to hang on the wall, but this piece, the title is called After Marcel Duchamp because, you know, as, as most people know, Marcel Duchamp was famous for his, uh, his ready-mades. I would say the most famous piece was his, uh, his urinal piece that he, um, that he, that he, uh, that he used, uh, just incorporating a, uh, a urinal, I think he called it a uh, fountain. I think it was, um, but this uh, this piece, you know, I just I just found this uh, this footprint in the sheetrock mud on the sheetrock, just already made. So in the tradition of uh, of Marcel Duchamp's ready-mades, um, I titled this piece after Marcel Duchamp. 
Okay. What's so neat about it, folks, is in person, it really looks like um, a, a rock formation. It really looks like some beautiful rocks that have, uh, you know, been layered together. And so and it resembles a lot of some. So the media really gives a... Uh, I'm glad he explained it, although to me it loses a lot of the mystery because I would have never thought anything about that because the explanation is a lot less... Um, pretty, I think, than the actual look of the piece. Uh, but if, if you saw it, for those who collect, uh, like different natural stones and stuff, it really looks like that, like a, something he had carved out of a uh, um, some kind of a place where the rock formations were there. But it really, it's pretty. Approximately, what size is this? This is, I would say, about maybe 15 by 9, okay. approximately. All right. All right, and let's go ahead and move on to another one. I have one that's a little taller, a vertical one, which is great, a little different size, but depending on where you need it. And uh, this got some great colorations. Uh, the others have been predominantly uh, Sierra, uh, Sierra tones, and this has got some beautiful purples and shades that really evolved. It really emphasize again that insulation foam. Do you have a name on this one? Uh, that one is is still untitled. I haven't thought of a name for it yet. That's and actually the, one of my uh, most... size about? Um, I would say 22 by 10, okay. possibly. That's great. And the composition, again, it's got a wooden frame and feels like a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of other stuff here in the uh, down here. I don't know if that's screen attached or if that's striations caused by another footprint. Or what do we have there? That is actually... That is actually, it's mostly collage. You can see all the different, um, mm -hmm. the uh, paper collage and all of that. And this was, a, this was actually part of a, um, another piece at one time that had, some, uh, that had some ceramic tile on it. And all of those striations, those little hexagon patterns that you mm -hmm. say looks like screen, was actually um, where, oh, the, the, where, where the, the tile, tile was had come, attached. It was attached, it came off, and this oh, yeah. is what was left in the, um, cool. in the grout that uh, it was just sort of on a on a piece of uh, sheetrock and the paper the paper on the sheetrock came off and it was that was all on there so I I pasted it on and um, just sort of integrated it with some with some faux finish um, with some faux finish stone uh, mm -hmm. stone texture that you can just right. you can just go and pick up at Again, the hardware looks, store a lot like striations of stone so you really have done great in that look now I noticed that the foam itself is much orange and is it's mm -hmm. almost close to maturation or uh... yeah this one this one is very close to maturation actually those pieces of foam that those were um, those were left outside in the in the weather for a long so, a lot so longer. So expedited the, uh, mm -hmm. the process. Huh? Yeah. Great. Great. Well, this is lovely. Now, Mike and, and the audience, as you know, we usually open, and I know our director will open the lines to phones, and this is usually a popular show for people who'd like to call and get more information about the artists that we talk about, so the numbers will be up there on your screen. Don't hesitate to give us a call, and we'll be happy to answer any question Mike will about his art or anything else about our show that you'd be interested in, so don't hesitate to give a call. Okay, uh, anything else? So this one still remains untitled, you said, right? Yes. Okay, well, why don't we go ahead and, uh, while we're waiting for calls, go ahead and bring, another, bring up another piece. Okay. This is actually, I think, I think this is my most recent piece that I just finished. Uh, right. this, is another, this is another part of those uh, sun-ripened paintings. You can see that the foam is, uh, is still a lot darker than in the brick, than in that pe first piece titled Brick. But um, this is uh, this was actually a much older piece that I had started on, and just it was uh, it didn't have any of the foam on it or any of this, uh, and I had just I had just started on it. This was one of my first, uh, maybe about five or six years ago. Um, I had just started working with texture, mm -hmm. and I'll show you in some of my in some of my upcoming pieces. I had unfortunately I had my uh, car broken into. And uh, they smashed the front passenger window, um, but I was able to. I swept up all of the um, automotive, uh, the safety glass, mm -hmm. and I um, I pasted it onto the canvas, made a nice texture, okay. and 
you know, really, once I got to that point, I really didn't know what else to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so it just, it just sat there in the studio for years, and I had moved on to other techniques and other processes and other styles that I was working in. And then, you know, just finally, I started, after getting back into the um, working with texture and all that sort of thing, did I, did I re revisit this piece. So you can, um, you can see a little bit of the automotive glass here and there, mm -hmm. but mostly it's, mostly it's been covered over by the foam. Here's a little right. piece sticking out here, and then you have some more in here. Mm -hmm. But mostly it's been covered over with the foam and, the, uh, and all this really thick um, faux finish stone. We got some great colors for you, folks. Again, and the gold uh, seems to pre, uh, be a preeminent color in his work, which really makes up a lot of the rocks uh, look alike as a background. But here he's got some some beautiful browns or caramels and mm -hmm. some light blue striata on the right side, but really, and then some white. So really got some beautiful color for those who like abstract art. I think I certainly do. This is certainly a piece to consider. Did you say this had a title? I know you said. It's your oldest piece, but also your newest piece. Mm -hmm. you? Yeah, I just did finish this one. It still it still remains untitled, but it is um, it is part. A lot of this that you see in here is part of a process I call suspension painting. Oh, I know. Where Remember, we got to define it because you know, just like you had your solar. Uh, I forgot what you call the solar painting, but what do we call it? suspension painting for someone who doesn't um, understand? Like suspension myself. painting is a mix is a uh, a process that I use um, where oil based. Uh, oil-based uh, media and water-based media are mixed together. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of this is a lot of this is wood varnish, um, different colors of wood varnish, uh, red oak, golden pine, and all of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that you know, like in, a, in like you see in a in a salad bowl, the oil the oil-based um, media and the water-based media they don't mix. You know, one floats right, on top right, of the other. Right. So, I, so the uh, the the lighter one gets suspended in the uh, in the heavier one it sinks to the bottom, mm -hmm. and then it just you know it all just kind of floats together like oil and vinegar oil and vinegar in a uh, in a salad, I got it. and it just you leave it out and it just it just slowly dries, mm -hmm. and this is you know this is another similar. Okay, what one. size is this? Which this size? is this is about um, 14 by 18, okay. and that one's the same size. Okay, well they haven't seen that yet, so we're going to go ahead and look at a new one now. Uh, which is similar to um, what Mike ha is holding, but again, a lot more colorful. Uh, and again, we're talking about a similar type of, I see this has a title on the back, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah, what? Easter Egg Sunset. Is Easter that what it's called? Easter Egg Sunset, that's correct. Mm -hmm. 2009, so again, brand new one. Uh, as you notice, this really has the color. So I guess you, you, you're relating to the uh, dying of Easter eggs when they come with all the fabulous uh, colors. Is that, is that uh -huh. where yeah, you got sort your inspiration? Of, well, it's not really where I got the inspiration, but it just sort of ended up being that way. You know, a lot of, a lot of these paintings, they'll evolve as they're being created, and the final product is not necessarily what I've, I was playing planning when I started the painting. But um, you know, this one has a lot of those pastel colors in it, the pinks and the yellows and the blues. Well, that's what um, I'm talking about. The inspiration for the title comes mm -hmm. from the pastel colors yeah. that resemble Easter egg colors, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then you'll see it's done over a, uh, you see some paper collage in there. And you see on the top left corner, uh, this is something interesting that, uh, that I like to point out, that orange rust color that you see in there, right. that's part of the suspension painting. That's actually rust that was uh, I had a, a can of, uh, of paint thinner that was uh, that was just had been sitting out in the rain for a while and it had collected a, a lot of rust that had just settled at the bottom of the of the can and it kept getting onto the canvas as I was pour I, I would pour some on so that the the uh, the oil based materials in the uh, in the suspension would would get thinner and move around a little bit more and it kept getting this orange rust on there. At first I couldn't figure out where it was coming from until I, and then I realized, oh, that's rust from the bottom of the can. So, you know, I, I just sort of poured it on there and I just sort of poured it on there mm -hmm. and moved it around a little bit and let it dry. It dried in that pattern and I finished over it with a uh, with a oil-based gloss medium and 
that was that's one of, that's my first painting to incorporate um, rust. Well, this one certainly would add color to any wall, whether you've got a plain white wall of a contemporary home mm -hmm. or any of the light tones, or even the older tones like we have in our older homes. The bright. This is certainly going to bring it out because it's just certainly one of the most colorful ones that you've done so far that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at the next one you have, and we'll give us a little bit of information on that one. Well, this is this piece is called uh, Professor Kokata's Academy. It's another it's another one from that series that we when we uh, when we were recyc we were uh, renovating the Capoeira Academy, and this is you'll see a lot of greens and blues and yellows in there, and that was inspired. Those are some of the, the uh, those are the colors of Brazil that we painted. We ended up painting the academy. So, so this was actually part of the academy itself, again, like the other one was. Or? Yeah, those are actually these pieces are actually made from stuff I pulled out of the walls, walls the and the floor, ceiling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll see what you see a lot of this one, this texture on here. This is actually ceiling texture. Some of it's coming off as I touch it, which the is other stuff very like brick. Some of mm -hmm. the uh, grouting look is very really attractive down the bottom. Yeah, this so is this is all tile, mm -hmm. and you know I, I tiled. I put the tile on the piece, and I filled in between the tile with uh, just with a tube of uh, of a yellow acrylic paint. Instead of normal, you resemble mortar, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and you know this one. We were the first thing we did in there was we is uh, when we went to renovate. One of the first things we had to do was pull out all of the old. Um, the plaster ceiling that had all of this texture on it, and so that was a lot. You know that that, that ceiling was a lot of uh, inspiration for this piece and um, and some other pieces that I made that aren't here today. But that was this was one of my first experiments with the uh, with that ceiling texture, which which actually turns out to be sort of brittle. Again, a lot of colors, and specifically mm -hmm. as you mentioned the the Brazilian flag colors. So that's really mm -hmm. great. Uh, and what size are we talking about here? Is this a this is 13 and a half by 22. Okay. And we're going to get a little larger of the next piece. Uh, let me see if we can get it on here. This is very interesting because kind of, again, devoid, like a, almost a black and white and gray. I mean, just going away from all the color we just started approaching. This is a much larger piece. Uh, let's talk about this one. Does this have a title at all? Um, that one is that one is still untitled. That's actually a much older piece. This is this is the rest of the um, automotive safety glass that I used from my car window. This is actually a piece that I made back then, and it was um, I actually completed it. And but it was a it was just sort of a uh, anomaly in my in my uh, in my work because none of you know none of my other paintings at the time really involved texture and all of this sort of thing. It was a lot of collage and drawing and mixed media painting like that. But so you know this one just sort of stayed in the back of the closet in the studio for several years. And now now that I have a, a complete body of works that are textural that this one sort of uh, this one sort of integrates well into, I've uh, I decided to pull this one out and uh, and start showing it. I really like this one of the best, even though it's, to me, totally different. In fact, I would call it something like winter frost or ice frost. To me, it gives that look of, uh, um, in the winter, sometimes, not necessarily here, but certainly in the northern area where it's rained a lot and things have turned totally to ice, whether it's in the forest, natural area, or looking through a window that has been fro frosted over by the ice. So uh, I really like it. I think it's, um, to me, totally different than the other stuff we've showing. Uh, not that I didn't care about the other one, but this is definitely a, a, a distinction from the others and once again I think this is so far one of my favorite pieces this is a larger we have more larger ones to come but what are we talking about here in the size this is um, on canvas is that yeah, right? the, yeah that's actually this two, is more natural to say to the regular artist putting it on canvas instead of the other boards etc mm -hmm. so for people who are looking more at traditional art this would fall a, a lot in that framework but yeah um, yeah this one is it's actually two canvases put together Mm -hmm. I think they were 18 by 24 each, so that makes it uh, 24 by 36. 36. Yeah, two by three. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one is uh, I used to work a lot on canvas with with some of my other styles, but then I sort of you know I switched to wood.